Welcome to Bunch Montessori Early Childhood Center. I'm Brenda Huth, Montessori Resource Teacher. Our beautiful school, which was established in 1991, is one of the public magnet school choices in Fort Wayne Community Schools. We currently serve a diverse population of 253 to 6 year olds. Each of the nine fully equipped Montessori classrooms have two full-time adults, one Montessori certified teacher, and one assistant. Our children enter our program by an application, then lottery process. Once children complete their kindergarten year, they can continue their Montessori education by attending Tolls Intermediate Montessori School for their 6 to 9, 9 to 12, and middle school years. We are proud to say that we are the first public Montessori school to be accredited by the American Montessori Society. This community is dedicated to the education of all children who pass through our doors. There is a general feeling on the part of the teachers and parents that this is a special educational environment that breaks the common public school mold. The purpose of this video is to show you how our staff has taken the Fort Wayne Community Schools Elementary Literacy Framework, or ELF model, and meshed it with the Montessori language curriculum. The ELF model balances teacher-initiated explicit instruction with multiple opportunities for students to construct their own knowledge through authentic literacy experiences. Explicit instruction is integrated and connected with instructional strategies that promote the active use of knowledge. The National Reading Panel, Reading First, and scientifically based reading research identifies five components of reading instruction. Phonemic awareness, systematic phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and text comprehension. These five components are the foundation for the ELF model. We will begin with an overview of a typical language area in our school. First, you will see a classroom library or book area. Notice how the Macmillan McGraw Hill reading series has been incorporated into the language area. The series includes leveled readers, trade books, and big books. Next, you will see the metal inset shelf. The pre-reading shelf includes opposites, rhyming, sequencing, and go-togethers. We continue with the Montessori sequence language materials, pink, blue, and green levels, and end with the farm. Next, we will show several children working with teacher-developed materials that fit into the Montessori language sequence. This is the Alconan word strips. The direct aim of this material is to learn the concept that words are made of sounds. Tyler is working with the short vowel book sequencing strips. The direct aim is to learn that a story has to have a sequence in order for it to make sense. Ashley is counting and matching the number of words that are in each sentence. The direct aim is to learn that sentences are made of words. These are the rhyming objects. The direct aim is to rehearse auditory discrimination of rhyming words. Maddie is completing the fact and fiction cards. Maddie is a more advanced green level reader and can complete this work on her own. The direct aim is to learn the difference between statements that are fact and statements that are fiction. Iris completes the syllabication cards by clapping out the syllables in each word. Iris learns that words contain syllables. Mrs. Fry and Libby are working with the sound out game. The purpose of this work is to develop phonemic awareness and auditory discrimination of beginning sounds. Tyler is working on the ending soundboard with objects. The direct aim of this work is to learn to auditorily discriminate ending sounds. This is the word family's work. It is being done with refrigerator magnets and could also be done with the movable alphabet. Students learn that several words can be made from the same ending. These words are called word families. Nathan is reading a pink level comprehension card. Once he completes reading the card, he will answer level one comprehension questions either orally or written. The questions are on the back of each card. 
Maxi is using the ABC order work. He will learn the concept of alphabetizing. Indirectly, he will learn the order of the letters in the alphabet and to read three and four letter words. This is the medial vowel object work. This material teaches the concept of short vowels in the medial position. The indirect aims include rehearsal of the a, e, i, a, and a uh sounds. The next section of the video will show teaching demonstrations that meet the five components of research-based reading instruction. The first strategy you will see is an interactive read aloud. In an interactive read aloud, the teacher models think aloud during reading with a predetermined focus of metacognitive strategies, comprehension strategies, and or vocabulary in context. The teacher interacts with students during and after the read aloud to socialize intelligence. You will see several skills being addressed in this example. My story today is called Snowmen at Night. And we've talked about the title of our story. We know the title is the name of the book. And the name of the book is very important. Who can raise their hand and tell me how many words are in the title, Snowmen at Night? Jonah? Three. There are three. Count them with me. One, two, three. Can you read it with me? Snowmen at Night. This story was written by Carolyn Buner. And when someone writes the words to the story, what are they called? Raise their, your hand and tell me what they're called when they write the words. They are called the author. The pictures are by Mark Buner. Oh, they have the same name. I bet they're related. When someone draws the pictures for a story, what are they called? Raise your hand and tell me what they're called. Sierra? The illustrator. You're right. The person who draws the pictures in a story is called the illustrator. Well, boys and girls, just by looking at the cover of this book, what do you think this story is going to be about? What do you predict? Remember, when we predict, we make a guess. What do you predict this story is going to be about? How can you tell they're having fun? Carson? You're right. At the bottom in the still illustrations, I can see that the snowmen are smiling. I bet they're going to have some fun. Well, let's read to see what happens. Who remembers what this part of the book is called? Nathan? The title page. It is the title page. And again, I have my title, Snowmen at Night. And again, I have my author's name and my illustrator's name. And down here at the very bottom, they've added a special piece to the title page. This is the publisher. What does the publisher do? Ashley? They do. They put the book together. This is one of my favorite stories, David, because I love the illustrations. So as I'm reading, I want you to pay very close attention to the illustrations because Mark Buner has added lots and lots of details to help us tell the story, not only with the words, but with the illustrations. One wintry day, I made a snowman very round and tall. The next day when I saw him, he was not the same at all. Raise your hand if you have ever made a snowman before. Yeah, lots of people. Raise your hand. We got lots of snow last night. Raise your hand if you got to make a snowman last night. Maybe some of you. His hat had slipped. His arms drooped down. He really looked a fright. It made me start to wonder, what do snowmen do at night? Now, boys and girls, as I read that page, I realized that I heard a pattern. What kind of a pattern did you hear? What kind of a book is this? I'm going to read it again. You listen carefully and tell me what kind of book you think this is. His hat had slipped. His arms drooped down. He really looked a fright. It made me start to wonder, what do snowmen do at night? What kind of a book is it, Carson? It is a rhyming book. Fright and night do rhyme. They have the same ending sound. They gathered in a circle while they wait for all the others, sipping cups of ice-cold cocoa made by snowman mothers. Raise your hand if you have ever had ice-cold cocoa. 
I have never, ever had ice cold cocoa. Why would snowmen need ice cold cocoa? Why would they need ice cold cocoa, Libby? Why, why would they melt? What, what, what would they, if they had what kind of cocoa, how would that make them melt? Not ice cold, but the other kind. Hot cocoa. If they had hot cocoa, that would make them melt. So we can drink hot cocoa. Hot cocoa doesn't make us melt. Then the snowman games begin. They line up in their places, each one anxious for their turn in the snowman races. How do you think those snowmen feel right now? Happy. What's another word besides for happy that we could use? Nathan? Excited. They're excited. That would be a more colorful word to say that the snowmen were excited. Then it's time for sledding. It's a wild ride downhill. Now I want to talk about this page because I think this page is pretty neat. The author did something very, very special with his words. Go back here. Look at the words on this page. Look at that very closely. Now, look at the words on this page. Why do you think the author chose to write the words going down instead of straight across? Why would the author do that? Carson, why would the author write the words going down? Okay, because it looks like the snowmen are going down the hill. Yes, so it looks like a hill. So listen how I'm going to read this. Then it's time for sledding. It's a wild ride down the hill. Why did I make my voice do that? Did you hear how I made my voice go up and then down? Let me read it again. Then it's time for sledding. It's a wild ride down the hill. My voice sounded like I was sledding down a hill, didn't it? I want you to look at the setting. Remember we've talked about the setting and the setting is where the story happens and when it happens. Do you think this story is real or is it make-believe? Sierra, it is make-believe. It doesn't really happen. This book is a book that is fiction. How do I know that this book is fiction? How do I know that it's fiction, Sierra? Snowmen really cannot play games. You're right, Sierra. The next strategy we'll see is a shared reading. In a shared reading, the teacher uses a big book or other easily visible text and involves the students in reading together. If other materials are used, they must be easily visible to each student. Shared reading provides opportunities to teach concepts about print, cue sources, and reading strategies in fluent reading. You will see several skills being addressed in the following example. Boys and girls, today we're going to read a story, and the story today is called Flower Garden. And we're going to read from a big book today so that you can help me with the words in the story. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my reading finger out, and my reading finger helps me point to each word as I read. Garden in a shopping cart doesn't it look great? Garden on the checkout stand, I can hardly... Now, boys and girls, I'm going to give you a clue. This book is a rhyming book, and I went through before we read, and I put some post-it notes to cover up the words that are there. We're going to have to use what we know about rhyming words to try to figure out what that word is. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to reread the first page, and we're going to have to think about what word will go there. I'll give you a clue. It is a rhyme. Garden in a shopping cart. Doesn't it look great? Garden on the checkout stand, I can hardly... Now we have to find out a word that rhymes with the word great. Before I have you give the answer, I'm going to give you one more clue. I'm going to give you the beginning sound. Raise your hand and tell me what that beginning sound is. 
What's that beginning sound, Maxie? The, the beginning. Wha. The beginning sound is wa. So I have to think of a word that rhymes with great and begins with a wa. Tyler, what do you think that word is? Wait. Let's check. Let's see if that makes sense. If it looks right. Wait. Does it look right? Does it make sense? It does. How do you think she feels about finally being at her front door? Happy. happy. Maybe I'm going to give you a new colorful word. Besides for happy, I might say that she feels relieved. Do you know what that word relieved means? Relieved means that she's very excited, very happy that she doesn't have to carry that garden upstairs anymore. So she can finally be relieved. She doesn't have that big job that she was having before. She gets to relax a little bit. Put purple pansies at each end, daisies white as snow, daffodils, geraniums, and tulips in a row. Garden in a window box high above the street. Hmm. If it's high above the street, do you think this little girl lives in a house? No. Where might she live if she's planting a garden in a window box, Sierra? Maybe in an apartment. So I used my picture clues. I used my knowledge of rhymes. I knew they had to have the same ending sound. And I also looked to see if it made sense. Did those letters look right? Did it sound right? The final strategy you will see is small group reading. In a small group reading, the teacher brings students who have similar processing and skill development needs together for small group instruction. Each group has three to six students and membership is flexible based on progress documented on running records and other authentic assessments. The lesson may take one or two days depending on the length of the book and the needs of the student. Students will improve their strategic processing and read fluently at their instructional levels. This success will enable them to progress to more difficult levels of text. Boys and girls, today we're going to read another story, but before we read that story, I want us to practice our wall words. So I want you to help me read the words together. To the sea we play a can go have I is like. I'm going to have you make the word we for me. Nathan, can you make the word we? What's the first sound? Mm -hmm. Let's clap it. W E, we. Thank you. So as we look at this book, I want you to see if you can find the word like. And I need you to get your frames out, your two fingers, Nathan and find the word like. Yes, thank you. That is the word like. Let's spell it again. L-I-K-E. And we're going to do a picture walk and see what is going to happen at the playground. Go ahead and turn to your title page. Nathan, what do you see happening on the title page? There's kids sliding. Yes, there are kids sliding together, yes. Let's go to the next page on page two, please, Blaze. Ashley, what are they doing on page two? They're playing in the sandbox. Yeah, they are playing in the sandbox. We know that we can't just use our picture clues when we're trying to figure out what a word is. So on page two, I want you to look at that very last word and put your finger underneath it on page two. Put it right underneath the word. Yep, right underneath the word. I can see that they're playing in the sandbox. And if I look right above that word, I can see that there is a picture clue. Mm -hmm. Tyler, we're putting our finger right underneath. I can see that that's a picture clue. Let's look at that first sound. What's that first sound that you hear? Hmm, does sandbox begin with a s? Yeah. Yeah. Let's read through that word. Sandbox. So I know that I can use my picture clue and I can also use my first sound to help me guess what that word is. Blaze, you may go ahead and start reading. 
You may go ahead and start reading, Tyler. Tyler, I'm going to stop you because I really liked how you touched the bottom of sand and you touched the bottom of castle because you saw that there were two words. Thank you. I go to the playground with my family. Something that we really like to do is we like to do the slide. So I'm going to take my sentence strip and I'm going to write a sentence about what I like to do with my family. So I'm going to write, we like the slide. So if I'm going to start, how is my sentence going to start? What type of a letter do I need to use? I do need to use a capital letter. And I'm going to write the sentence, we like the slides. Now, we is a law word. Who can raise their hand and tell me how to spell we? Nathan? W. W. E. So I'm going to start, and it's a capital W. E. My next word is like. Who can tell me how to spell like? Ashley? L. E. Start again. L. I. K. E. L-I-K-E. Should I start my li the word like right here? No. What do I need to make sure yes. I do? One finger space. Spell it with me. L-I-K-E. And then I'm going to say we like the. One finger space. Everyone help me spell the. T-H-E. And now I have to write the word slide. Hmm, is slide up on my wall? Mm. No. So what do I have to do to find out how to spell the word slide? Stretch. I have to stretch it. So let's help me do the word slide. Slide. What's the first sound you hear in slide, Tyler? <laughs> One finger space. Help me again. Oh, Ashley, I d. What's that next sound we hear in slide, Nathan? Oh. Help me again. Oh, I d. What's that next sound? I. And Blaze, help me out. What's that last sound you hear in slide? D. D. Now. Usually when I go to a slide, or to the park, and go on the slides, there's usually more than one slide. How am I going to make the word slide into slides? What do I need to add to the end? One S. S at the end to show that there's more than one slide. All right, let's read that sentence. We like the slides. Am I done? What do I need? A period. a period at the end. I'm going to give you each a sentence strip, and you're going to write the sentence of something that your family likes to do at the playground. So you're going to write, we like the, and think about what your favorite thing is to do. Write that word, and what's going to go at the very end? Period. period. And what type of letter needs to start your sentence? All right, thank you much. I'll give you your sentence strip. You may get your pencil, eraser, and you may go to a table to finish your work. Thank you. As stated in Comprehension Instruction, What Works, an article by Michael Presley, reading is often thought of as a hierarchy of skills, from processing of individual letters and their associated sounds, to word recognition, to text processing competencies. Skilled comprehension requires fluid articulation of all these processes, beginning with the sounding out and recognition of individual words to the understanding of sentences in paragraphs as part of much longer text. There is instruction at all of these levels that can be carried out so as to increase student success in reading. We hope you've enjoyed your visit to Bunch Montessori Early Childhood Center. Our hope is that you'll take the reading instruction strategies shown in this video and apply them to your own reading instruction. Thank you.